Good morning, it's Saturday morning here. It's good to see all of you smiling faces. I'm gonna head up north about an hour to another beach and check out some RVs at a show there. Uh, kind of curious as to what's in store for 2020. Wanna go? If you probably hear, we are at the Daytona International Speedway. Uh, we're not here to watch any races, but we are here to see what's new for 2020. Now, by no means is this, you know, something on the scale of like the RV Super Show in Tampa. We're gonna take a walk around the property here and uh, see what's new in each class of uh, RVs. They've got them all lined up out here, categories by their class. We've got class C's, travel trailers, fifth wheels, vans. Let's start off and take a look at some vans. Looks like we've got the larger Mercedes down there on the end. Dodge Ram chassis is over here. All the prices and the years are marked clearly on the windshields. Now this is the Travado, and if you remember, recently I reviewed one of these in a video. Took it out for a test drive. The uh, setup in this one is quite similar. And since I already have a video on this particular model, I'm not gonna focus on it too much. Save some time. Okay, here we have a Sprinter on a Mercedes chassis. This one even has a slide out. $74,998 used. Touring coach. Awning on top, outside speakers, LED lights. Got some AC outlets over here. Swivel TV up top, looks like the same uh, basic decor materials that they used in the last one that I reviewed which was a few years older front seats swivel around yep, same materials hideaway buttons very small space Table is stowed away in there. Microwave on top. Slide out makes a big difference adding room in there. Even though the slide out only involves this couch seating area. Take a look at the floor plan. Tight squeeze coming in. It's a very open floor plan in the back with a bed up above that lowers down and this obviously turns into a bed as well. Nice leather. Induction, induction cooktop. Swivel TV underneath. Control panel above. Microwave above. Okay, this Revel caught my eyes a little bit uh, more uh, for boondocking, off-road, all-terrain. Winnebago's got its name on it. It's a Mercedes Sprinter chassis called the Rebel.
A higher level of quality in the materials and craftsmanship, design. The dinette is in its usual place here. Two can sit here and somebody can sit here and swivel around. This serves as some storage as well as toilet and wet bath. Refrigerator down below. Folding spigot in the sink with an induction cooktop next to that. Bed in the back. It's set up for sleeping. I'm sure this uh, sits upright, folds into a couch. That's the Rebel. This is Winnebago's Dodge Ram chassis off-road Travato, or all-terrain Travato, I would say. A little bit, a little bit different of a floor plan here. The galley is right behind the driver's seat. Two twin beds that also convert into a dining area. Overhead storage, entertainment, control panels, set up for solar. Wet bathroom in the back. Fully takes up the back to the rear access doors. Mercedes chassis, Storyteller Overland. Overland. On the entry, you have a fold out table standing outside. Lots of, lots of material here to provide uh, protection while you're out doors over land walking through muddy grass or whatever everything in here is easy to clean off back areas open for all the toys that you're going to take out in the woods for you and also converts into a couch and a bed it says up here list price 205 discount 56 leaves you at 149 for this one are you wondering what i'm wondering i mean $205,000 for a van. You're paying $200,000 to be inconvenienced. <laughs> Maybe somebody in the comments below can help me understand exactly where that money goes uh, into this kind of vehicle. I looked over the vehicle. I didn't see any gold trim. I'm trying to figure out where the money is. Where is $200,000 in this simple van? Those of you that are regular viewers remember my Newmar Baystar Class A that I had. It was a 2014, still under warranty, and I just sold it for 76.9. Lots of luxury in that RV. Lots of living space. You don't, you didn't have to stand outside to eat off a table. Big TVs, two air conditioners, you know, full bath and shower for 80 grand. This one's 200 grand. Maybe I'm missing something. These Overland models are all set up to make the most out of solar panels, solar energy. So it's a breezy Saturday today, and as you can see, it's not very busy at all here. Let's take a look at some Class C's, or B pluses. I've got some used B pluses here. These are the prices. 54.9 for that Siesta. 84.9 for the Winnebago. Tiffin's got one over here for 94. This one's called the Wayfarer. It's got a rearward facing slide. The aft section. You walk in, it's nice and roomy initially. There's something beeping in here. It's got a decent amount of room.
I like that Tiffin. I could do that one. I could do that. It's plenty of room. Okay, this is another slightly used Tiffin, 94.9 on this one, Mercedes chassis. Tiffin units have a very good reputation for quality, serviceability. And you can see the quality in the craftsmanship, the workmanship, the materials. Everything feels much more solid. This has a lot of room. <laughs> This one has the TV that lowers down into the cabinet below. Look at the size of this bed that folds down. It's also a table. Makes into a table, and then you can pull the whole thing down to bring down the bed. Meanwhile, you have all of the storage space in the center for bicycles and camping gear, kayaks. It's got a separate shower. Pedestal sink, a little bit of storage. Okay, this is the Quantum. There's a number of these out here on the Mercedes that one chassis. Big. Full wall slide out on this one. It's a 2020 72 9. So that full wall slide makes a big difference in here. And when it's closed up, you can still access everything, but I don't think you can access the bathroom without the slide out. <clears throat> Some of the trim work delaminating. This is a Thor product as many RVs are nowadays, <laughs> one way or another. Overhead bunk. This transforms into a bed, and you have a bed back there. Plenty of room. This is the Winnebago View. I've seen a lot of these on the road. This one's 115, 300 for 2020. It's got a nice sweeping layout in here with the curved countertops and this rounded corner of the bathroom here. Swivel TV above the sink, induction cooktop, and gas. Convection microwave. All your control panels above the refrigerator, which is gas and electric. Storage down below the bed and seating area and dining area. That converts into what looks like a RV King. More storage above the bed. Swivel TV. Full stand-up shower. Very large sleeping area up top. Reading lights, power ports, AC. This is another 2020 Tiffin B Plus 117.6 on this one. Doesn't look to be used. It's also a Wayfarer. Let's see if it's a different floor plan. Floor plan is a little different. Split with an aisle between the head and 
and I assume the shower. It's a full shower. It's a flimsy door. Get two twin beds or a full queen it looks like to be. Okay, let's take a look at some classes. I get a lot of viewer comments that uh, are kind of leaning towards wanting to be able to operate uh, simple to handle, sim simple to drive RV, such as a B plus or some of the smaller class C's. This is a Mini Winnie, which is obviously a very popular Winnebago. It's on the E350 Super Duty Ford chassis. And this is a 2020 for 59.9. No folding steps to worry about. Horseshoe booth. Eating area that converts into a sleeping area. We have overhead sleeping, obviously. Queen sleeping area in the corner. Full shower and bath in the lavatory. All gas in this one with an oven. Overhead microwave. E450 Super Duty Ford chassis. This Quantum looks to be about 30, 35 foot. 87.9 on this one for 2020. Oh. Boot seating converts into a bed. A couple of nice recliners over here. Leather. Rounded corner bead on the lavatory. Plenty of storage straight across. Induction oven with gas. I'm sorry, induction cooktop with gas. Convection microwave above. Good countertops, Corian. Stainless steel residential fridge, electronic levelers, remote control for the control panels. A little step up to the back. Don't have any lights on. Nice full size bathroom. This is about the same size as the bathroom that I had in the Independence. The new Mar had. Looks like a queen. Dark wood finish, vanity. It's always nice to have a big window out the back. Okay, so right outside of that last RV we went through is a base star, a Newmar base star. My old RV. This is still the Ford V10 Triton engine powered on this one, but this is the larger chassis with the 22 and a half inch wheels. You have side view cameras. 79.9 used. Look what year this is. That's what I paid for mine. This has a mid-entrance doorway, two slides on this side, and a full wall almost on this side. Same floor tiles I had in mine. I love that double glaze, and the bump and stagger on the cabinetry. Another booth on this one, Corian countertops of course, all metal fixtures. Looks like marine vinyl on the furniture. Nice large Sony TV. Conversion booth, another TV all the way up front. Same exact layout as my last one. I wish I would have had that center console though. And the fold out work table on that side. Nice recliners across from the big TV. Same Atkins cooktop as I had. Worked great. Whirlpool convection microwave. And the same bathroom. No, bathroom's arranged a little differently. It's split. And the stainless steel sink with the Corian countertops, real wood cabinetry. And there's a bathroom in the back. Same cabinetry. This is a smaller bed. That's how they get away with the bathroom in the back. Every year, Newmar includes their own artwork. Another bathroom in the back, with Corian countertop, stainless steel sink, good glazed and bump and stagger cabinetry. 
fully enclosed shower that is very tall. I liked my layout better. <laughs> I might be a little partial. But I would have loved to have the slides arranged in mine like they are here. We have a slide over here and a slide over there giving you lots of room in the middle. I know some Greyhound dogs that would love that. Okay, this is a little 22 foot chateau. You see a lot of these on the road as well. This is another Th Thor product. It's on an E350 Super Duty Ford chassis. 61.5 for this one. Same layout as the other Thor product. day and night shades, laminate countertops, and the backsplash here is paper, made to look like glass tile. Okay, we've got some travel trailers over here that we'll go through. This is a Grand Design Imagine and a Grand Design Reflection. Arctic insulation. This one is comparable, easily, to a fifth wheel layout. The island in the middle, in front of the galley. Gas cooktop with an oven below. Microwave convection oven. Decent countertops, not Corian. The plastic backsplash. Got to keep it light. So this is a slide out on this side. This is also a slide out on this side. Island in the middle with storage down below. The sink is stainless steel. Refrigerator matches the cabinetry. Entertainment center or fireplace. Heater. More storage up top. Got a sleeper sofa in the back. Across the back, some nice recliners here. Dinner table over there with uh, two chairs that are probably stowed away somewhere. Got a full bathroom. Nothing wrong with that. like a queen, maybe an RV king, a semi-pocket door, and a wardrobe. This has got a nice layout. Like I said, it's comparable to a fifth wheel without having to go upstairs to the front. Three-year manufacturer warranty, 37.6 for that one. I don't have the stats with me as far as the uh, dry weight, empty weight, any of the weight ratings. And there aren't very many salesmen out here. Okay, so that was the reflection. This is the Imagine by Grand Design. Let's take a look. 36,000 for 2020. Got one slide on this side, two doors, two entrances. This one enters into the bedroom area. With two shower heads above. Oh, no, those are reading lamps. <laughs> and then a master bath, I guess you could call it. it. Leads right here into the bedroom. Full shower door next to that. That leads to the rest of the living area. Another door there goes back into the bathroom. Island in the middle. There's a fireplace down below. And entertainment, storage. Same appliances. And it's a bunk. All kinds of room for the kids and their friends. 
This is also grand design. Transcend. Explore. Stainless steel here on the tiny microwave. Gas. Gas cooktop with oven. Looks like the same cabinetry. Doing something a little different here. I thought it was damaged at first, but this is the purposely cut to look like a big slab of wood on the table. So let me give you some pointers of what I look for when I go into an RV to see to distinguish something that's going to last. Uh, or if it's something that's probably going to fall apart. So I'll start with the inside, but one of the things I look for when I come in the entranceway is the door. This is going to be one of the most heavily used areas of the RV. So one of the things I look for to make sure that they have are a good set of stairs, entry stairs, because these are going to be going up and down and stepped on uh, by everybody, obviously, and they're out in the weather. So I want to check these to make sure there's good quality entry steps. Uh, should have a handle to help you come up into the entryway and then I look at the weather stripping and everything on the entryway as we're coming in as well as the hinges to make sure that there's a good heavy duty good quality hinges because the door is another thing that's going to be used constantly next thing I look at is the flooring I want to see if this is a laminate or if it's a, a vinyl tile or if it's just laminate rolled out sometimes the laminate that's rolled out will begin to buckle a little bit or delaminate from the floor so i want to make sure that i check with the dealer or redo my research to make sure of what is the installation process of the flooring and the flooring type in here these trailers i keep try to keep them as light as possible so you're not going to have ceramic tile on most of these if any once i'm inside uh, my eye is drawn to the cabinetry and what i want to look for here are good hinges on the doors also I'm going to look at look for the construction of the cabinetry itself. Um, preferably, you know, these are not the good hinges. If you remember the Independence, you know, the Newmar, we had those hinges that went in. They were spring loaded and super heavy duty, and uh, they would auto close. These don't. These are just simply attached. I want to press wood, no dovetail, which is put together with staples. And then feel the, the shelf up there. You can see this is a very thin shelf up the top there. So it's put together with staples and not dovetail joints with screws or anything like that. Inherently, these RVs twist and torque as you go down the road and they move it as you're trying to maneuver into an RV park and you run over potholes or high and low areas of terrain. And uh, things can easily twist and come unattached from the walls and things like that. Something else I look at in the, uh, especially in the galley, is the countertops. I prefer to avoid laminate countertops because they tend to with all the twisting and as well as, you know, spills and things like that that happen to countertops. The laminate can delaminate in some places and have to be replaced. Prefer a non-porous, very solid one-piece type of countertop like a Corian. This is more of a laminated pressed wood to keep it light. Check the walls. You're gonna want a good sturdy structure so that should one of the kids trip on something and fall into a wall, their elbow's not gonna punch a hole in it. Again, these things are made to be as light as possible so more, so that way the RV is available to a greater market of people. Fixtures, I look to see if they have all metal fixtures, you know, they're going to put plastic in most of them nowadays, especially travel trailers to keep them lighter. But if you're looking at class B plus or class C, class A even, and you see this type of plastic shower insert and this little tiny flimsy plastic shower, this thing is going to pull off after a little bit of use. This will pull off the wall. And I know the joints and fixtures in there are plastic as well. I do like this, this door, how it rolls like a shade out of the way, but you wanna make sure that's dry. 
Another thing I look for in the quality of uh, an RV unit is I want to see the structure of how this thing is put together. You know, where are the struts, where are the joists, where's the framing, what's the framing made out of, and, and what grade of uh, insulation is between here and the roof. And what kind of insulation do we have below? Am I going to freeze to death? How, what, what, you know, what is this thing set up for? What kind of weather is this thing set up for? Things that get used a lot, you know, like doorknobs and doors, stuff like this. Uh, again, check the hinges and see the framing around this little frosted glass insert here. The framing here is uh, not lined up and this is just pressed wood and, you know, that's probably going to be bumped and hit as you take things in and out of this pantry and uh, start to come apart. The shelves in here are super thin. I mean, you really can't put a lot of weight on here, much less stuff bouncing around there, around in there as you go down the road. Obviously, we're in a fifth wheel. Again, here's that quality I was talking about in, in the cabinetry. You can see here we have the good hinges. Some nice overstuffed recliners and a full sleeper sofa in the back. Side outs on both sides with the island in the middle with a good Corian countertop. I like that. Stainless steel appliances with metal fixtures and a stainless steel sink. Good stuff. Got a real tile backsplash up here. Dark cherry wood with full shower. Bedroom has nice head clearance, ceiling clearance, queen bed. So that was the Pinecrest, the division of Tiffin. When I went inside, I noticed they had the good cabinetry and the good fixtures and things like that, but it's the quality of the workmanship itself, how it's put together was kind of flimsy. And I actually thought it was a used unit. So not totally impressed. I prefer a grand design, I believe, when it comes to the fifth wheel. Okay, let's see if we can get into one of these redwoods. This one's 95.4 for a 2020. Okay, we're gonna head to the front with the step up into the bedroom, which is looks like a king bed. slide out up here of course and bathroom all the way to the front type of arrangement with a nice tile look at the shower head in this thing. it's a good looking uh, application but it obviously it's not real ceramic tile although it looks like real ceramic tile it's uh, plastic it's got a real wood bench in there huge storage space giant walk-in closet and this plumper washer and dryer back here the good countertops Corian floor is squeaky as heck good hinges it's got the good countertops yeah. separate seating not a booth which I like table folds in Wireless charging. Nice dual recliner across from the fireplace and TV. And a sleeper sofa all the way in the back. And a ceiling fan. After a few travels, that will be on the floor. Some of the uh, RVs I've seen, such as Pippi's, the traveling uh, rattled her fan blades loose and they broke off. Day and night shades here. These light fixtures like this, they look great, but uh, they're gonna get a lot of attention going down the road when it comes to vibration. Love the design in here. Lots of effort put into like the backsplash and the countertops to tie everything together to look a lot more modern. You have a full-size residential refrigerator, French door at the top with a freezer at the bottom, double doors. That is very nice. So good cabinetry, good stainless steel. Look at the size of this gas stove over here. Microwave convection oven at the top. It's an excellent sink, sink fixture here. This is metal. 
And this is a great idea here for your sink. You could take your dishes after you wash them and set them right on top of this and they'll drain. And when you're not using them, you can just roll these things up and put them in a drawer or you can leave them right on top. Half bath with a nice glass bowl sink. Foot flush toilet. Skylight and a very high ceiling. Got the good material on this depth, Corian. Interesting. Speakers are even integrated throughout the entire unit. Got some nice detail on the island here. This one is one I would consider. 95.4 for this. The steps are totally solid. Redwood, that's why they had the reputation that they have. This is one that I would buy. Happy with the quality, the craftsmanship, the materials used in the craftsmanship, the fixtures, the appliances, tons of storage, very well put together, high quality paint. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so we're looking for some of the new things for 2020 and... Uh, so we went with the water manifold Eric, system. Eric here is telling me that this water manifold system, tell me about that. Eric. So there is a direct run to each fixture in the unit. So if, if there's anything wrong, you can come out here and they're all labeled. You turn the water off to that fixture. Isolation. Yep, and then it, it improves efficiency because there's no T's or anything coming off of them on each fixture. Love it. Got some slat boards in here. You put your hooks in there in any arrangement that you want to customize it. And this is... Uh, the brains for the in-command system. The brains for the in-command system. system. Of course, you have your TV hookups out here and a radio uh, for the speakers outside. Central radio vacuum. for the speakers outside, and you have your central vacuum system in here as well. See, it's those little things, man, that mean so much. Look how nice even the ceiling up inside here is is finished. Your hydraulic reservoir and everything you move where it's a little easier to get to this year. See, and this is another thing that goes into quality craftsmanship is the pre-planning. And just like my new Mar, they kept that in mind when they designed it so that you can get to things because things are going to break. And the servicemen, the techs come out, they want to be able to get in there and fix it and not have to dis disassemble half your RV. Matter of fact, I was just sitting there telling my viewers that uh, this is one that I would consider because there's certain things that I look for when I go through an RV, like the countertops not being laminate, right. you know, the wood having the cabinetry having the good hinges, and uh, for the most part, as much as can be expected, right. have the good uh, dovetail assembly bump and stagger or double glaze like Numar has but also you can just feel the solid as you open these doors and close them that they're real wood Where you and that's what I was talking about in the other travel trailer remember it didn't have the soft clothes where they stay closed as you're going down the road this one even has pull out spice rack it's so little things like that that mean so much and look at this cooktop yeah you get the, uh, the four cubic it almost feet. looks like that's four cubic feet it almost looks like a wolf or Gen Air. I would love that. I'm seeing a lot of induction too. In yeah, a lot of we these tried units. that. Didn't go over well for us. So this is the type of unit that I would seriously, seriously consider owning. Because of the quality and all of the in all of the materials used, the craftsmanship, their choice of certain things like these dual shower heads with metal fixtures, a folding wooden stool in the shower. It's already pre set up for hot water. This is probably even a little larger than I would need for sure. I don't need a one in the half bathroom. I'd rather use the space for something else. But everywhere else you can see the quality shine through and the every countertop, the surfaces, real wood. Forethought put into the assembly of if, if something breaks, how are you gonna get to it conveniently? Hookups everywhere, accessibility, power points, and USB ports. Theme, color theme, design theme in here. The wood, the way you have the dark and it bounces off or marries up with this vanilla. Very nice. Grand design momentum. You see a lot of these motoring down the road. I used to always want one with the back porch on it like this, you know, the ramp. It also lowers down so you can get your toys out. But it has an awning up above and an enclosed porch where you can just sit outside and enjoy that. This Momentum is a 2020 at 88.5. Again, in this one you can see how the consistency and the quality of the workmanship and the, the materials that they use. Personally, I prefer the living space towards the front like this one's laid out. 
a greater feeling of separation from one part of the RV to the next. And the layout makes sense to watch the entertainment center as well as visit. You've got room for an ottoman or a coffee table if you wanted to up here. Island in the middle with the good countertops. Almost feels like marble. Notice you don't have the fake glass wallpaper backsplash. Got a nice three burner gas stove with the oven. Bun warmer down below and a convection microwave up top. Residential French door refrigerator. And that is a big dog house up there. Separate chair seating, which is my choice. Got a couple of bar stools here at the kitchen island. I love that. And I love the design of this. This looks like a oil rubbed bronze spigot there. It's metal. Here we're stepping up into the bedroom with the uh, bathroom in between here. It's got a beautiful, easy to clean one piece shower insert with metal fixtures. Top quality, ultra luxury pillow top mattress, king bed, huge windows inside the bedroom, lots of storage beside and over the bed and wardrobes on the other side of the bed. With more storage down below and your TV in the corner. Grand design, momentum. Out here at the Daytona International Speedway, you can hear them racing down the track in the background. This is a M-Class momentum. Toy hauler. So you basically live from the midpoint of the RV back to the rest of the RV. Good quality countertops, good quality sink and metal fixtures with the good one piece shower insert. Plenty of room standing up in there. Hey. Got all the cleats down here to tie your toys down while you're traveling down the road. Big porch out the back above the ramp. And above, you've got these sofas that convert the sleepers raised up out of the way. Once you get your toys out, you can drop them down. You've got plenty of sleeping and sitting space for the crew. TV up front and a half a bathroom back here as well. As soon as you come into the entrance here, you can see the big difference. These steps automatically retract and they're lighted. Stainless steel on the top. You also have lots of marble. And look at this grouted stone in the steps. Once you're up inside and you're getting underway, this piece here slides out and fill covers this hole. Ample room once you're inside with the real shiny ceramic tile. These are stone countertops, granite countertops. Your AC outlets retract. Bump and stagger, double glazed, real wood, obviously. Real tile backsplash, of course. You have all your controls, easy accessible everywhere throughout. And it's double stainless steel sink with granite inserts for extra countertop space. Side residential refrigerator with a freezer down below has the wood trim to match the cabinetry. King bed in the rear is a Tempur-Pedic Decorated ceiling, ceiling fans, ceiling lights throughout. You have a preset up for your washer and dryer, which is right there. <laughs> Fireplace in the bedroom. This is the master bath. A double sink is in her sink with glass sinks and metal fixtures, ceramic or stone backsplash chrome stainless steel everywhere. Nice wooden bench inside the shower with plenty more granite and marble steel fixtures. Toilet with a boudet. Got 
Another fireplace in the living room with a large LG TV. Speakers are integrated into the ceiling everywhere. Driver area is set up with a double LCD monitor for all your cameras and all your systems as you motor down the road. So down here along this road you have your diesel units, diesel pushers, and across from them they have their little brothers, the gas powered Class A's. Have an open road Allegro over here, Fleetwood, all the big players, Numar. Most of these uh, are using the V10 Triton bulletproof engine that I loved in mine. I also had the Banks power package. Got me across the country for a number of years, no problem at all. The Tiffin Diesel pushers here were averaging about three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollars. This is a 2020 for two hundred sixty-seven thousand. It's got the awning over the door, lighted with LEDs. Uh, almost the full slide on the passenger side with a slide in the back, single axle. It's got the full treatment right on right at entry with leather, stone, real wood. These units always have the uh, unique design into the ceilings with lighting and different materials. You see the sconce lighting here on the side is very unique. You don't see that in all of the RVs. Got plenty of USB ports. Soft, overstuffed leather furniture. Separate seating and nice stone countertops with the glass backsplash. Metal fixtures. Same layout as the other one with the bathroom midship. Got the good stone shower here. Under cabinet lighting throughout there down by the baseboards floor so you can don't have to turn on the overheads at overhead lights at night when you move around. Oops, excuse me. This particular sofa here, when you get underway, you bring your slide in. This piece slides in like a jackknife back into the sofa itself. Play some TV. This is a Discovery. I was in uh, one of these in Tampa last year. Uh, it's got uh, two slides on the passenger side, dual axle, big wheels, 22 and a half inch wheels, 40 footer. 44 foot. Stone entryway, leather. Stainless steel farmer sink. They have nice lighting underneath the edge of the countertop. Subway tile, glass tile on the back. TV retracts down behind the sofa, saving a lot of space and making that window available to you. That's behind it. Got a Bose sound bar. This we've got a horseshoe dinette with a drop down table. Interesting mirror here with LED backlighting. Nice little accents.
125,000 2020 Thor Miramar. Single axle, 22 and a half inch wheels. It's a 32 footer. So this is kind of on the level of the new Mar Base Star. A little bit more high tech of a driver area layout. Just like the new Mars, you got the good countertops, solid Corian, metal fixtures, stainless steel appliances with gas and induction. Stainless steel microwave convection oven. Horseshoe dinette that drops down into a bed. This is my preferred shape of the shower in this type of unit. It's a corner shower like this seems to offer a little bit more room. Got good cabinetry here, double glazed. This is your vinyl composite tile floors. It's not a roll of linoleum or vinyl. Plenty of room here in the bedroom at the foot of the bed, thanks to the slider on both sides. Slider on this side goes all the way back. The slider in the bedroom is individual, goes back, which gives you lots of room to get dressed and whatnot. 94.9 for this Thor Wind Sports. Wind Sports. 19 and a half inch wheels. It's a 29 foot drop down booth dining area. Converts to a bed, obviously, with lots of Velcro. Got the good Corian countertops. It's got a one piece fiberglass doghouse with uh, a console in the middle. He's in an LCI electronic leveling system. Nice layout for the cockpit area. Passenger has a nice workstation with plenty of access to power ports and USBs. Not using the good hinges here on the cabinetry. It's not self-close. Those won't last long. Adjustable shelves, stapled together wood. Looks like a Dometic cooktop here, and you have some sort of flat tile mounted to a, a baseboard, and then that's glued to the the back as a backsplash, which is better than just wallpaper. Got a tri-folding shower door with laminate counter sink in the bathroom. I don't know why they put laminate in the, where it's wet. This bathroom is closed by a one-sided pocket door. Looks like a Dometic gas electric fridge matches the woodwork. And uh, there's one slide out here in the bedroom with a king bed. A wardrobe and a half. Got another bed above the driver area you've probably seen these they lower down besides the new mar this allegro is another option that i would probably go with when it comes to a gas powered class a this is 114.9 for a used allegro outdoor entertainment center the storage bins on the outside open to the side like this and they're all pneumatic and I like these a lot better because I've hit my head on the other kind and opened upward like I had on the Bay Star. So this is a much preferred type of bin door and it's got a nice pneumatic in there that closes it securely when you're done. This has got the good electrical management system and surge protector built into it here for your shore power. If it were me, I would add an electric winch to that so you don't have to heave ho that entire thing into the bay covered in mud and grass. Got a nice Cummins Onan 7000 generator here. You can load that up with probably everything in the RV. That's a Ford V10 Triton and it doesn't indicate that it's got the bank's power system on it. So that's a lot of RV to climb hills in the mountains and keep up with the, everybody else. You come in, you can see you've got the uh, carbon composite vinyl tile instead of a rolled out linoleum. It's got a decent work area in the cockpit. 
control the auto leveling system and your other cameras. Pasture gets a nice little foot window down there to see outside. It's got a wide open layout here where they drop down dinette right behind the driver's seat. Corian countertops, bump, bump and stagger, single glaze wood with decent hinges. Stainless steel convection microwave with a black Atkins gas cooktop and oven. I'm surprised they didn't match the other stainless steel appliances. Residential fridge. It's got a swell TV across from the main couch, which has the section of couch that pulls out, jackknifes out into an L-shaped couch. Sleeping area, king bed, nice big roomy toilet and separate shower. This is a used unit, so there's some areas that look used. You see they've got the T, the bed that lowers down above the driver and passenger seats. Here we've got a Thor Omni, very large class C+. It's an F550, 4x4, power stroke, 6.7 liter Ford chassis. Again, another thing that seems consistent with Thor is you have the plastic tile that is glued to a uh, baseboard and then glued to the wall above the, the cook area with induction stove, gas cooktop, oh, wow. convection really? microwave oven. Yeah. You do have good countertops though, they're not laminate. You have double glazed bump and stagger cabinetry with the good hinges. Stainless steel residential fridge. Get a nice sized bathroom with a corner shower, metal fixtures, and good countertops as well in here. The backsplash, however, is wallpaper. And the bedroom looks like just a full size bed. Lots of USB ports, wardrobe vanity, entertainment center controls, lighting controls. The fold down table, the cheap one, the booth. the overhead mom's attic sleeping area. We've all seen the Seneca with the crazy paint job. Really impressive uh, design on the exterior of this Jayco Seneca. This is actually on a Freightliner chassis. Well, and there you have it, a full hour of 2020 RV touring happiness, from travel trailers to the big diesel pusher Class A's. There are many makes and models of RV units I was hoping to see on display, such as the growing popularity of the mini travel trailers and all-terrain sport trailers. But with consideration that this is not a major RV super show, I suppose I am happy to have access to at least the most popular models. I was surprised, however, how little innovation I saw across all of the major RV manufacturers for the 2020 turn of the decade lineup. I saw very little change in much of the floor plan designs as well as the choice of materials. I also saw a little change in the methods of construction or assembly. The interior of many of the 2020 units looked almost exactly the same as many of the 2014 units I've been in, with only slight differences in layout and materials. I am glad to see some manufacturers apparently paying attention to customers by making improvements to things like plumbing, accessibility for repair, and electrical design. Additions of high-tech 
Electronic gadgets are becoming more popular, obviously, such as wireless charging, LED lights and TVs, electronic control panels for added convenience, also more attention given to pre-wire solar hookups or expansion. I hope to review more RVs this year, focusing on those that have brought more innovation to the table, clever engineering that makes campers more efficient, reliable, convenient, with less work and more fun. Please take a second and mention in the comments below anything important that I overlooked or something I said that was incorrect and I'll make it right. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. We have a great group of people here and would love to have you. I hope you took something positive away from this video. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you so desire. I'm Bobby Jean and this is Good Therapy.